In the previous video, we have discussed the outline of how we are going to optimize our procedural generation algorithm. Let's start from preparing our candidate map class. So we are back in Unity. Let's open up the candidate map class. Okay. So we will need to add some variables to our class because what we will do, we will measure how good our map is by the length of our path but also I have mentioned previously that we will want to have a certain number of corners to make our path look more natural and also we will want to avoid the situation where there are multiple corners near each other because this makes the path look unnatural but usually where there are multiple obstacles in a way there might be a longer path that has less corners and we will strive to achieve exactly that. So what we need to do now is to implement a private list of vector threes and we will call it corners list. Next, what we will want to have is a private int corners near each other count so this will be the variable that will store how many corners are near each other and we want to reduce this number to be as low as it can be okay great let's slide down and when we are finding our path we will want to call this dot corners list equals get list of corners we don't have this method yet and we are going to pass this dot path let's alt enter and generate this method generated and we are going to call this dot corners near each other equal calculate corners near each other we don't have this method yet And we are going to pass here this corners list. Okay, again, Alt Enter and generate this method. And let's go to implement those two methods. Let's start from calculating the corners list. So here we are going to create a list of a vector three called corners positions. equals new list great next if our uh, path count is less than or equal to zero we are going to simply return because there are no corners corners positions great and if that is not the case we are going to call for uh, i equals zero, i less than path dot count, and what we are going to do is we are going to check for the corners. So if our path i plus one, so the next uh, position on our path dot x, uh, and uh, of course we need to subtract minus two from our count because we are going to check against the nearest next neighbor and the second next neighbor so basically the idea is simple we are going to check the next position uh, and the second next position so i plus one and i plus two and decide if there is a corner in front of us this leaves us with one special case because we are not starting from the start position but rather from the position next after one after uh, the start position so we are checking the positions on our path and first one will be path i plus one x if this is greater than path of index i dot x or our path i plus one x is less than path of index i 
dot x. So if this is the case, we need to check what is the z position for the second corner. So we have found out that our next cell has a different x position than our current cell. But this doesn't indicate yet that this is a corner. Because if we have a straight line, then naturally the next position will be different. So what we need to do now is to check the next position, so uh, path i plus 2, if this has a different z coordinate than our previous, so i plus 1 cell. Because if this is the case, then we are changing uh, on the i plus 1 on x axis and on i plus 2 on z axis, which then indicates that this is a corner. So the i plus 1 would be then a corner. So to implement this, we need to check if our path i plus 2 dot z, so on z axis, if this is different than our path i plus 1z, or our path i plus 2z is less than path i plus 1. And only now we can decide, yes, the next cell must be a corner. So we are going to, to call corner positions, add our path i plus 1. And another case would be the opposite. So first there is a change on z-axis and next there is a change on uh, x-axis. So let's copy this. Uh, actually, we can copy this, yeah, this whole thing, and here we can paste it, so else if, and now we are going to change the axis for z, and z for axis. So first there is a change on z axis, and next there will be a change on x axis. Great. And this would indicate that there is a corner again in the second cell so not i but i plus one but as i have said before we currently don't include our start position so what would be the easiest thing to do would be to create a list of vector three called a path with start equals new vector 3 and let's take a path as the input so we are basically copying the path and what we can do is to call our path with start insert at index 0 our start point and now instead of looping through the path we can change this let's use ctrl rr to our path with start and instead here we are going to pass path and now this is correct because we are taking this list from the attribute of our method we are passing this to path with start and then we are working with path with start that has inserted start point at the beginning of our list and now this will be correct now we need to return of course our return corner's position. Great. We have our get, corner, get list of corners implemented, but we have one more method, calculate corners near each other. So now we are taking the corners list. First, let's create int corners near each other equals zero. We are going to loop for i equals zero i less than corners list dot count minus one i plus plus and we are going to check if vector three dot distance because we have a list of vector threes so if distance a corners list i and corners list i plus one 
is less or equal to 1. Of course, this will be always equal to 1 if they are near each other or greater. And we are going to add corners near each other plus plus. And at the end, we are going to return corners near each other. So what we are going to be able to do is to say that they are two or three or x corners near each other and we are going to be able to say okay fitness function calculate the fitness score if there are more than two corners near each other then subtract uh, some value or maybe if there are less than two corners near each other add some value to our fitness score so we need to add a new method uh, which will be at the end let's call it public void add mutation and we are going to take double mutation rate and what we, we are going to do is calculate int number of items that we want to mutate equals int obstacles array dot length times mutation rate okay not rat but rate so we are going to calculate how many obstacles do we want to mutate and we are going to loop while num of items is greater than zero we are going to calculate int random index equals random dot range from zero to obstacles array dot length and we are going to say obstacle array of this index equals the different uh, boolean value than it has currently and we are going to say number of items minus minus now of course this can cause uh, a one item to be changed multiple times during the mutation but it isn't that important for our algorithm although we could prevent that we could say that we only want a unique mutations and the second thing we need to add here is a public candidate map deep clone and this method will be used to clone this candidate map because when we are searching through the population to find the best map that we have generated during this population we will want to copy it and save it for later if by any chance this will be the best overall map so we need to return a new candidate map and we are going to take this as input and of course we do not have this constructor so let's create ctar and let's take candidate candidate map as the input okay and what we will want to create here is this dot uh, this dot grid we are going to say it's equal to candidate map dot grid because we are not modifying the grid inside our candidate map this dot start point equals candidate map and i'm going to copy this maybe with a full stop uh, dot start point this uh, from a new line at this dot exit point equals i'm going to paste the candidate map dot exit point next we are going to copy this dot obstacles array equals we are going to cast bool array and we are going to call candidate uh, map dot obstacle array dot clone because we want to clone this array next we need to copy the corner list uh, corners list so this dot corners list equals new list vector 3 and we are going to pass candidate map corners list to duplicate the list next we are going to say this dot corners near each other equals candidate map corners near each other because this is passed by value not by a reference and what we else need to copy is of course the path itself so this dot path equals new list vector threes we are going to pass candidate map dot path okay 
And basically that's it, we have copied or deep cloned our candidate map and returned a new instance of it. And before we can finish this class off, we need to return the map data including our coroners uh, list and coroners near each other. So let's right click, left click on the map data and go to definition and we need to add public list of vector threes. This will be coroners list. And again, public int corners near each other. Okay, we can use this arrow to go back to our class. And here we will want to pass corners list equals this dot corners list. And our num corners near each other equals this dot corners near each other count. Great, so now we are passing everything back uh, with our map data, so that's good, and I think that's mostly it for our candidate map. So in the next video, we'll take care of creating a map brain class that will drive our genetic algorithm.